high on the woodpecker today, just as last year I'm making wooden padlocks. Now they're not the same, but just like last time, they work just like a real padlock. If you've had the chance to see one of my Christmas episodes, you would know that I always make useless puzzles for our son. Last year, it was a wooden padlock puzzle. By the way, if you're interested in having your own, I still have kits to sell. Last Christmas, I also made the padlock, mm, but not as complicated as this one. No, because of René's injury. I didn't have time to design something intricate. But I still was inspired by this book. And here's what I made. As you can see, it only has four tiers and the pieces are less complicated. So after saving two SketchUp files for both plywood thicknesses, I'm able to make the CNC files with Aspire. For the main parts, since it's the same thickness as my other padlock, I'm going to use the same dimensions as my first one. After importing the SketchUp file, I have four tiers on top of each other. The first thing I have to do is flip this tier. After putting every tier together, I'm putting every section into different layers. When I'm done, I have a layer for the alignment holes, one for the keyhole, and another one for the outside profile cut. I also have more layers, but those are for the laser burning. But this will come later. By selecting all the holes on the alignment layer, I can make the drilling toolpath. Next, I select the back round keyhole and make its toolpath. But this hole is the only one that it's not a true hole, contrary to the main keyhole. When the keyholes are done, it's time to make the profile toolpath. But on this toolpath, I've added some tabs so each tier will stay on the piece of plywood. I save a G-Coal file and I'm ready to cut the padlock. Like I've already said, I'll use the plywood that I've already cut for my other padlock and by using those pieces, I'm also able to use the holding jig I made when I mass produced my padlock. Now it's time to cut a padlock. <laughs> no, it's not as fast as this. And here's the final result. But I also want to laser burn some useless decoration on my padlock. And this is why I have a bunch of other layers for the different steps of the laser burning process. As a matter of fact, laser burning is more complicated than cutting with a bit because I have to take into account the laser speed movement, its power, how far apart the lines are, the distance between the laser and the wood, and don't forget the wood species. It's the reason why I have so many toolpaths just for the laser burning process. And here's the final result. Eh, not bad. But I'm not done yet. I need to make another g -coal file for the shackle and the key pivot. But this is super easy. Two holes and a profile shape. When I have this file, it's time to go to the CNC and cut them. Obviously, this takes more time than this. Now that I have most of the pieces, it's time to free them. Cut a bunch of aligning pins and put together my new padlock. This is perfect, but I'm missing the locking mechanism. First thing to do is to thin some strips of hard wood. Trace the shape of the spring and cut it. This is perfect, but I have a small problem. The spring is too stiff. It's hard to bend. 
I need to make it weaker. Perfect. This is much easier to bend. Now it's time to take care of the shackle. I have to drill a hole to be able to lock the shackle. But when I'll mass produce those, I will change this so I won't need to drill this hole. But for all my tests and Christmas gifts, I made this hole. Since it's just a hole and not a slot, I also need to cut two notches on the locking pin. Okay, it's not very efficient with a rasp. It's faster this way. Here's the final shape of the locking pin. The tip also needs to be beveled. This will help. And I cut a bit at the top of the spring. Now that I have all the pieces, it's time to put everything in place. Perfect. But I'm missing a key. A padlock without a key is useless. The first thing I cut is a small bow to help turn the key. But I still need a shank. I also need to be able to insert the bow into this shank. Ah, it's working! But does it work on the padlock? Wow, I have a functional padlock. But this is not very efficient if I want to make dozens of padlocks. So I cut a shanky jig into the plywood holding jig. It's only a groove and an eyelining hole. But I still need a shank. Now I can start the CNC and cut the shank. This is perfect. And here's how I did this. In Aspire, I set up a job with the origin dead center. I add a bunch of guidelines to help me. Then I trace a line to the length of my shank and add a circle. This will be for the bit. Then I add two more guides for the slot I need to make to hold the bow in place and make the line. Now I can make all the necessary tool paths for the key. With a ball nose bit, I cut a groove to hold the shank in place. Here it is, but I also need a hole to make sure both sides will align. So I drill a hole where the bit key will be. From now on, all the cuts will be made with a bit that's half the size of the shank. I also need to cut grooves for the bow. And not too difficult. I select the line I made and make a profile tool pad. And here's the result. Mm, but it's not really what I want. I'll come back to this later. The last tool pad is for the key bit that will push on the lever. Now I have all the tool pads that I need to make a key. I just need to export the four G code files. I begin by the two pads for the jig key. Eh, not too difficult, but they need to be on two different files because I'm using two different types of router bit. Then I export the two sides of the key. On one file, I have the key bit hole and one slot for the bow, and on the other one, I just have the slot. But I have one small problem. You can see that the shank is a quarter of an inch and that half of it is above the jig. I need half of this thickness in the center for the bow. This means that I need to cut slots of 1 16th of an inch on both sides. But the way my G-code file is made, I will cut 1 16th from the jig surface and it's not what I want. Those slots need to be 1 16th above the jig surface. So I need to modify both G-code files. But it's super easy. After opening the file, I remove the line that brings the bit to the surface of the jig. Then on the next line, I won't move the bit under the surface, but rather above it. Next, I save this and that's it. I just need to do this on the other file and I'm done. With those files, I end up with keys just like this one. Now I'm ready to make the three padlocks I want for Christmas.
even if I have all the pieces for the key, I still need to glue them. As a matter of fact, it's the only part of the padlock that really needs to be glued. But I still have a bit of work to do. Here it is. I have everything for three padlock kits. I just need to give one to Frankie at Christmas. But now it needs to go from this shape to this. And this time around, it's simpler than the last time. Here's Frankie with his padlock that he assembled by himself. He told me that he really likes it. This was the wooden padlock that I gave our son last Christmas. Even if it's less complicated than the previous one, I really like it. If you want one, send me an email and I'll send you all the details. This is the first Christmas project I made last year. If you want to see what else I did, you'll be forced to come back to the woodpecker. Sorry.